We are joined by a true pioneer of space exploration. NASA astronaut Sonny Williams has spent more than 500 days in space, set records for spacewalking, and recently returned from a mission that was supposed to last a few days, turned into a nine-month odyssey on board the International Space Station. Sonny, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Alona. It's great to be here with you. Okay, so we have to really just talk about the big question first. This recent mission stretched from eight days until nearly nine months. You've been back for a few months now, so you kind of have more time to think about this. What was the most difficult adjustment coming back to Earth after that extended time in space? You know, um, coming back to Earth physically is difficult. Um, mentally, it's also a little challenging just because you're back here on Earth with so many people. <laughs> it was up there with uh, just a couple of us, and so uh, that was just a great time to really focus on what the work that we are doing. But I think, the, honestly, the most difficult thing is that there's so much going on down here on Earth, and it's hard to just focus on one thing at a time. But I put family and friends first and had a great time since I've been home relaxing with them as well as sharing my story. So I think that's the best part about it. The, the worst part is it's just, just there's a lot going on down here. That is so true. You have to get back to all the multitasking and all the distractions. How did your muscles handle it? I know you all try to stay in shape, but it can't possibly be the same as gravity. Yeah, there's a lot of changes that happen when you're living where there's no gravity, of course. We do have a weightless, weightlifting machine called the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, which uses vacuum to, to be the motive force and translated to a barbell. So we could actually do things that we do in a gym here, like deadlifts and squats, and that's necessary for bone density, particularly in your pelvis, hips, and, uh, and on your uh, in your ankles. Uh, we have a treadmill, which also helps with the loading for the bone density, but again, also works on muscles. Uh, we have a bike that also works on your cardiovascular system and all your muscles. So even like your heart in space shrinks. So getting back mm. here on earth, we're pretty strong, specifically all the big muscles, but all those little muscles, like, you know, just the ones to hold your head up, mm -hmm. just the ones that help you balance on a day-to-day -day basis. We have to reinvigorate those. And so we work with our trainers to get that done in about a month or so, and then we're feeling pretty good. I'm just, not because I'm older, just because of space. I'm a little bit slower. My fast twitch muscles aren't acting as good as they should be right now, but we'll get there. We're getting there. Okay, so you're still in the process of all of this. Um, so it sounds like, you know, you all did everything you could to prepare. You mentioned spending the time with your family, um, and that was my next question. Kind of on the flip side, what has been the best part of being back here on Earth? Maybe it's the simple things or maybe it's more meaningful things. Oh, it's uh, it's it is the simple things. It's uh, you know I, my family's from New England, so I had an opportunity to go up there and jump in the ocean, and that was awesome. Mm. I had an opportunity to sit on my back porch and look at the mountains. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So those are like the simple things. It's just having conversations, trying to catch up. Uh, also, like it's funny. I somebody said something happened, and I was like, when did that happen? They're like last November. I'm like, oh yeah, I wasn't here. <laughs> so I, I missed some activities, and so it's nice to just be able to sit down and catch up with everybody. Yeah, it's kind of a big chunk you missed as a matter of fact so I'm sure there's a lot of catching up <laughs> are you going to be going back to space is that in the cards for you um, probably not. Uh, you know, we have a great number of uh, younger astronauts who hopefully we've led a good example and they're ready to take on the big tasks and uh, put their foot in history, uh, going back to the moon and then working on how we're going to move to Mars eventually. So, you know, I've had over 20 years in the astronaut office, had three great missions, um, couldn't have asked for anything more except maybe going to the moon. Hmm. Uh, but I think my husband would kill me. But if they did say, Sonny, you're the right one and you have to do it, uh, I think he'd give me a bye and let me go. I love that. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate visiting with you and um, best of luck in your next chapter. I know we'll all be following along. Thank you so much. Yeah, so she made a really interesting point as well, um, which you just heard a moment of, is that, you know, we do so such a great job on all of the physical training, um, the strategy training and everything yeah. else. But if you're going to go on a mission to somewhere like Mars, you're going to spend so much time in a very small space with just a couple of people. So that interpersonal communication has to be so good. I mean, she was stuck up there for nine months with one person. Oh my gosh. Who's that, that one person you would choose? I know, I, well, Ashley. I'd go with, I'd go with <laughs> Ashley. Smart man, um, smart man. But I, I remember asking her about that 
when she got off. So how did you, you know, make sure that your communication, they just kind of looked at each other and laughed because you know that that would have been really hard. There were probably some tense times yes. and they learned to work through it all. So yeah, like I said, just so much wisdom and so much perspective yeah. when you talk to an astronaut. And, cool. and adapting mentally, as she put it, you know, back to yeah. Earth life. Yeah. That's awesome. This crowded Earth, Cheetah. I know.